everyone and welcome to this series of uh, B Flash tutorials. Essentially what you guys did is you went over to our Demos Files Facebook page and you voted that B Flash was the tool that you, you guys wanted to sort of go through, do some tutorials on, learn how the OBD process works with B Flash, learn how logging works, the setup initially, and also uh, bench and boot mode. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover all these different things um, in a series of videos, this being the first one, um, and obviously, when you get your, your B Flash tool or when you get the tool, the first thing you need to do is obviously you need to set it up. So what you're going to go ahead and do is you want to go over to bflash.eu slash setup. And here you're going to be greeted with a manual on your left hand side. And this is going to basically be um, all the minimum require requirements for B Flash. It's also going to have a few other little get started um, information, uh, how to basically sign up with your B Flash, how to use the license file and all those sorts of things. So make sure you're looking at that when you um when you want to basically get it initialized and, and get the get the tool linked to your account. Um, so over to the right here, you'll go ahead and you'll download the B Flash software. This will download the latest software. You'll go ahead and click install um, and then you can go ahead and save it. So you can save it as B Flash setup. So what we'll, what we'll do is go ahead and do that. We'll let it download. Um, and once it's downloaded, what we're going to do is we're basically going to open that file, um, install it in our directory. Um, me personally, I install my tuning tools in my uh, D drive, which is an SSD, which is not part of the main C drive. Um, that's where I like to install everything. It's a bigger, bigger um, SSD. You want to go more info, run anyway. Go ahead and press yes. Okay, create desktop shortcut, no problem. Install. And there you go, it's extracting files. And extract. Next, I uh, accept this agreement. Okay, and then what it's done is, and done is install the drivers to allow the communication between your computer and the tool. Launch B Flash, go ahead. So this is B Flash, and this will be the latest software that B Flash have out. So you can go ahead and basically completely bring up the screen, maximize the window, and usually here is when you'll be given the license file, okay? Um, or you'll be prompted with a license file request. So what you'll go ahead and do is you'll follow those prompts and then it will send um, a, 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 uh, a code to your email. What you'll do is you'll then paste that code into this software here after the prompt window comes up and then you'll be basically granted the license file and that'll just um, go ahead and accept the tool. <coughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the basic interface today. Um, the main screen always has the updates for B Flash. So all of the latest updates for that software version are going to be on this main screen here. Down the bottom left is your communication identifier. Um, this little icon here will change colors depending on what communication is being established and whatnot. So now we know that the tool is not connected and it's not communicating. And on the right hand side, we've got voltage and amps. So amps or current draw will happen when the tool is in use and when it's reading and writing, and then the voltage should be um, obviously regulated majority of the time the tool is plugged in. So we're expecting to see about five volts once we plug the tool in, maybe 12 volts once the tool is um, either in bench mode with the power supply unit or um, connected to the OBD port. So from left to right, we're gonna go ahead and look at what the different functions of this B Flash tool uh, have. The first one is obviously vehicle selection. From here, we're prompted with a window which has all the different manufacturers um, that B Flash supports at this current period of time. Please note this is subject to change, of course. This video came out on the 22nd of, uh, of June, 2021. So when you're watching this in the future, there may be plenty more available and the interface might look slightly different. But as we are here today, um, this is the interface. Um, what we'll go ahead and do, we'll go ahead and, and basically do some little... Uh, trial runs here. We'll go down to maybe Volkswagen. Let's say we want to work with a Volkswagen Amarok today. So we'll go Volkswagen, click next here. We're going to go and find the ECU. So this, this tool works a little bit differently to other tools in that you don't actually have the uh, make and model. You have the uh, engine control unit or transmission control unit that you want to work with. Now I know that the Volkswagen Amarok has EDC 17 CP54 engine control unit so we'll scroll down under diesel engine control units see how you've got petrol at the top and then you go under diesel and then obviously it'll have gearbox under that and then maybe electric motor but we're going to go ahead and find EDC 17 CP54 so from here what we can do is press next um, now what it does now is it gives us the different read and write methods that are available for that particular engine control unit now for the Amarok it only gives us the ability to do bench 
protocol in terms of reading and writing, but we do have manufacturer specific data logging available and we do have a manufacturer specific diagnostic protocols and uh, dyno mode. So we go, go ahead and do is click OK, confirm. And this is the next window and you'll notice that this, uh, 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 another icon has come up um, and that's the diagnostic read and clear fault codes. So when we're connected to the vehicle, you can come up to here and you can press read codes clear codes, and then obviously dyno mode if you are working with a vehicle dyno, chassis dyno. Um, now going back to the flash programming, in this part here, you're actually given the ability to look at the uh, instruction manual on how to read and write this particular engine control unit. So you can go to help here. The help icon will bring up any instruction manuals regarding the reading and writing process of this engine control unit for bench programming, okay? The same would exist for OBD and the same would exist for boot mode. It would give you all the instruction manuals under help. So if we click help, what it's gonna go ahead and do is gonna go and, and bring up a web page. And this has got the B flash help guide, bench protocol, which is what we, we selected. And then you've got the ECU that we're working with with the processor that's in that ECU. And here's basically the bench pinout. We've got S1 and S2 pins, we've got can high and low, and we've got grounded power pins. And it tells us how many pins away, just like all the other um, instruction manuals and pinouts have for the other tools. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, we've got the read time, programming time, and some more information. So make sure you're following this information if you are gonna go ahead and do bench, bench mode, boot mode, or whatever else is required for an engine control unit um, that you're working with. So that basically sums up how to find your vehicle. Um, like I said, you will need to know the engine control unit that you are working with. There's no point saying, oh, you know, I've got a Hyundai Getz or a Hyundai i30N if you don't know what ECU it is. Obviously, I know the i30N is a SIM 2K250. Same thing again, boot protocol. This one's got a password. So if it's got password, make sure you refer to the help documentation to understand what that means and how that works. Okay, so here's the boot pin. Uh, boot, boot pin out, you need to make a bridge on these these contact points. I usually use two probes and then have a wire between those two probes and like I sort of wrap it around the probes as a way of bridging. I don't, you know, I don't like to go through an entire probe, then back through a probe, then down, and I don't like soldering either. So I'll, I'll generally get two probes, I'll put one on each contact, and then put a wire between the two probes of where the pins are touching, um, and then that'll be the bridge. That's usually what I do. And then you've got the RST pin and boot pin, which are these respective colors. Um, and as you can see here, um, the entire instruction manual is down here, okay? Um, so you please read boot mode password before attempting boot read or write operations. So that's really important, okay? And that's what you will refer to regarding the password, okay? So that, but yeah, so like I said, that basically sums up the um, reading and writing process what we'll do uh, as well a bit later, we'll get into reading and writing an actual ECU in bench and also in OBD mode. Um, for that, we'll be using a Mercedes-Benz A45 and a Mercedes-Benz C63S. The A45 was provided to us today by NKM Mechanical Solutions um, in Perth, Western Australia, and the C63 is the Laborde Motorsport brand car, which owns Demos Files. So um, really good to have those two cars today to basically give you some instruction later. And we might even go over the gearbox protocols in a later video. So moving on, um, we've got the settings tab here and under here we've got the user interface version, API version, tool API and all that sort of stuff. So if you ever need to provide any information to BFlash support, this is the information you can give them. Um, the next tab is the flash tab and this allows us to generate default file names for reading. So what that means is basically when you read a car, let's say it's an i30N, it'll just have SIM 2K 250 uh, OBD read. But if you don't have that tick, you'll have to name it something, whatever you want yourself for your own naming convention. Um, I recommend for master tools to have that off, slave tools to have it on, so the master knows what the slave is doing uh, as an option. And then of course, we've got the license here, which is the license file. Um, and this is gonna basically, this has our, our license number and whatnot, and when it expires and all that sort of stuff. So um, again, if you need to provide that to B Flash, there it is. Um, we've also got disabled checksum correction. Let's say you need to do some recovery work. Um, I wouldn't recommend having anything uh, touching this at all, ever, um, unless you are specified to by your master or by B Flash themselves. 
um, that's how you disable checksum correction of the tool. So if you want to do it in WinOS or you, you have another checksum algorithm that you want to use instead of the tool, you disable it there and then go ahead and flash that way. But otherwise, never have this ticked, please. Um, it's That's for your own good. You'll brick ECUs if you have that tick, so let's not do that. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead over to to uh, the car and I'll explain a few other a uh, few of these other icons and what they all mean. Hey guys, so now what we're uh, going to do is we're going to go over how to do an OBD uh, read and write. So for this particular instance, we've got um, Knowles A45 AMG W176, and we're going to be going ahead over to the vehicle selection tab. We're going to be going down to Mercedes Benz and we're going to be going to the MED 17.7.2 engine control unit with the Tricore 1797 processor. Um, what we want to do guys is also make sure we've got a trickle charger or a battery stabilization charger on the um, battery and we're going to go ahead and turn off all vehicle accessories so that includes the uh, the headlights um, up, sorry the headlining lights, the um, interior lights, the, the dash um, uh, MMI and uh, any other sort of things going on maybe um, if there's any other electrical load or accessories such as like dash cams and things like that maybe pull them out um, then we're going to go ahead and press next for this particular one we're going to do an OBD read make sure you guys are connected to the internet that's very important now what we're going to go ahead and do is turn on the ignition okay now the ignition's on battery stabilization Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do is obviously make sure the device is connected. Um, mine wasn't just then. Um, so yeah, make sure the device is connected. You'll come down with the master um, number there, the serial number, and then on the right we'll have the 12 volts from the ECU. So go ahead and click identification. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and read uh, the software, control numbers, and everything like that. Um, and that'll allow the tool to basically reference on the server uh, a virtual read when we click read. So if I click read now, we can go ahead and save it as something that I've that I want to specify because I haven't just got the generic sort of file name. So what I'll do is do A45 VR W176, and then this client is null, so I'll do that. Okay, and then save. What it's going to go ahead and do is going to look on the server for a file that matches that description as identified. So it's got the calibration reference number, the software, and the bootloader, um, and then it's downloading the file off the server. Check sum operation. So what it does is make sure that uh, mathematically the security checksum is uh, correct, which it is. Check sum success, and then there you go. So now that file has been downloaded to our desktop. Um, now what you go ahead and do is obviously you you calibrate that file, you make any adjustments, and then you're going to go ahead and click write. So usually you make sure the voltage of the ECU is around 12 and a half. So at this point in time, I know that this particular vehicle won't have a problem writing at that voltage, but Look for every other case, twelve and a half volts minimum, especially for BMW models. Um, obviously, that's not my job to tell you how to how to like battery stabilize a car, but at the end of the day, make sure that you're doing things within a certain amount of risk. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, upload this stage one file to the car. Okay. Uh, do I want to program the following file? Yes. Ignition is on. Okay. Battery uh, stabilizer is on. And what it's going to go ahead and do is connect to the server, check some the file that I've selected for this vehicle for the calibration, and it's going to go ahead and upload it. So that's what's going to happen now. So that beep was the uh, the instrument cluster letting us know that the uh, ECU has lost connection with the rest of the CAN modules, and there's an unlock delay. So this is generally like a security process where we get the seed key request and then it's uh, allowing for flash programming uh, through the tool. So now it's programming memory. B-Flash is probably one of the most efficient tools I've ever experienced um, and ever had the luxury of using for the Mercedes-Benz platform. It's able to program these control units in about a minute 12, a minute, minute 30. And um, what it does at the end, which I thought was pretty clever, is it actually deletes manufacturer specific DTCs. So if you, if you have any issues in any of the other uh, modules in the car, there's actually a message that's sent out from the B-Flash tool which deletes all of the uh, error codes from um, other modules in the car such as the gearbox uh, and whatnot, which is awesome. A lot of other tools don't do that. So it's nearly finished writing here, we're 80%. And there we have it, ECU is resetting.
it's going to go ahead and delete manufacturer specific error codes. So as you can see, manufacturer DTC erased, OBD DTC erased. Okay, and that's that program uh, process complete. It's one minute and forty seconds, so it wasn't too far off what um, what I'm used to used to seeing. So at that point now, we basically turn off the ignition. Okay, ignition's now off. I generally just give it maybe about ten seconds, let it reset. Okay, and at this point now, I'll go ahead and click on the diagnostic tab. I'll turn on the ignition. So in AMGs with auto stop start, you have to click it to the second setting. Go ahead and read codes. It's going to go ahead and print out the codes if the uh, ECU isn't bricked. No pending trouble codes, no confirmed trouble codes. Fantastic, the engine control unit is communicating. We haven't got any issues whatsoever. So yeah, that's basically how you do um, OBD reading. Thanks guys.